Hello, my name is Mrs Chambers and I'm so happy to be teaching you today. In the last lesson, I asked you to draw your own number line. How did you ensure that you had 10 equal parts? I decided to use a ruler with each part representing one centimetre. Does anyone have a different approach? I start, so once I've drawn my number line, starting at zero, which is here, okay, I counted along one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, and I put an arrow directly on the four tenths there. It's pointing to the point that is marked four tenths. Okay, what about for your um, dots? I drew my dots. Here they are. Okay, I've got 20 of them. I visualised where my 10 parts might be. So that was my columns. And I drew a ring around four of those columns. One, two, three, four. So four tenths. Did you have another way of showing four tenths? I did. I drew a couple of different ways. So here we go. Here's my first one. It looks like a 10 frame and I have shaded in four parts of my 10 frame. Does it matter that they're not together? No, because my whole has been divided into 10 equal parts and I have shaded in four of them. So therefore it's four tenths. Okay, I also drew some flowers. There we go. And a number line. So my flowers, I had 10 flowers and I drew around four. And then my number line, I made it so that it was vertical rather than horizontal. There we go. So that's mine. What did you do? Did you do something different? In today's learning, we're going to be thinking about fractions as numbers. I'm going to use our number lines. So I'd like you to use the number line that you created in the practice activity yesterday. But I also need you to get a peg or a paper clip. Pause the video and go and find a peg or a paper clip and bring it back. Okay. If we thought about the number line as a whole, starting at zero and ending at 10 tenths or one whole, where would four tenths be? I'm going to use a peg and I'm going to count along the number line to see whether I can identify where four tenths is. I'm going to start at zero. So my peg is on zero. I'm going to move one one tenth, two one tenths, three one tenths, four one tenths. Okay. Can you do that with me? Zero, one one tenth, two one tenths, three one tenths, four one tenths. Okay. If I was to carry on, can you predict where eight tenths would be? Okay, would that be a large part of the whole or would that be a small part of the whole? That's right, it would be a large part of the whole because it would be almost to the end, almost to one whole. Okay, so we're going to carry on counting. So we're going to move our peg. So four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths. Okay, let's have a little look at what it looks like on the screen. So we're going to move that arrow. We're going to move it along one tenth. Notice where the arrow stops right on the point that is marked two tenths. Three tenths and there's four tenths. Okay, which is a fairly small part of the whole um, in comparison. Five tenths, six tenths, just keep that, just checking that arrow is pointing to the point, seven tenths, and there is eight tenths. Okay, so that's a large part of the whole, it's almost the whole, it's almost to the end, but not quite. It's nine tenths, and there we are, we've got our whole. When a fraction is a fraction of something, it's shown by a section or a part. 
And when a fraction is a number, it's shown as a point. So let's have a little look at what this looks like. So on a number line, we can show that a, that a fraction is a fraction of something. So four tenths is a fraction of the whole. So here we go. That's shown on the number line because we are looking at four tenths as a fraction of ten tenths. You can see that we've covered one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths with our bar, but we've stopped at four tenths. We haven't gone any further. And that's OK if we're looking at fractions of, of as a fraction of something. But when we're thinking about fractions of a number, then the only part that matters is the point that is marked four tenths. So let's have a little look. Up. So the arrow is pointing to four tenths. If the arrow was pointing below four tenths, it would be less than four tenths. And if it was pointing above um, four tenths, it would be more than four tenths. But it's not. It's pointing right at the point. Okay, this is what it looks like as a, des as a fraction notation. And then this is what it looks like in our shapes. So you can see that we've got all of the um, four parts shaded. Uh, it, we're not just pointing at a number. And on our circle, again, four of our parts are shaded. We're not just looking at a number. So it's on the number line when it is on as a number. Have a look at this arrow on the number line. Chen thinks that the arrow is pointing at four tenths. Do you think he's correct? No, Chen is not correct because we know that four tenths is a number and so has an exact point on our number line. The arrow is not pointing at the exact point where the number four tenth is. It's pointing at a number more than four tenths. OK, so the arrow is pointing at a number more than four tenths as it is, has passed the four tenths on the number line. Have a look at this arrow, OK? Where is it pointing to? That's right, it is pointing to the number nine tenths. It is pointing to the exact number and point on the number line. It's not pointing below, it's not pointing above, it's at the exact point. And therefore, this arrow is showing nine tenths. This is your practice activity. So you're gonna need two strips of paper. With the first strip of paper, I would like you to have a go at making quarters. Make sure you visualize first how this will look. Okay, so think about what a quarter is. Think about what it's going to look like on your on your strip of paper. So how to make quarters. First, fold your paper in half. So there's my fold and I'm going to fold it over. Make sure you're accurate because we need them to be equal parts. OK, and then you're going to need to fold that piece in half again. OK, and fold it over. So that's what your paper should look like. Once you've done that, I'd like you to unfold your paper. OK. What do you see? Yes, the whole has been folded into one, two, three, four equal parts. OK, the next thing I'd like you to do is to draw a line down the centre of the piece of paper horizontally like that. This is now your number line. OK, and I would like you to mark the numbers on this number line, starting with zero and ending with four quarters. That's a whole. Where will each fraction need to sit? Yeah, remember that the fraction, when it's a number, needs to sit on the fold. The fold shows us the point where one, where one quarter is, where two quarters is, where three quarters is, and then the end shows us where the four quarters is. Okay, have you got it done? Fantastic. Okay, this time we're going to use the second piece of paper and we're going to have a go at making eighths with your paper strips. Strips. Okay, so make sure you visualise first. So think about what those quarters look like. Okay, now think about what they're going to look like when they're eighths. Are they going to be more folds or less folds? Okay, let's have a go and see. So first of all, you're going to pay, fold your paper in half. Okay. There we go. Then you're going to fold it in half again. And then you're going to fold it in half again. You have to make sure you're being really accurate and it's quite hard with that last fold. OK, so we folded it in half. Then we folded that half in half 
and then we folded that half in half. Okay, so once you've finished, you should have a piece of paper that looks like that. And then I would like you to unfold it. So you sort of have a piece of paper that looks like that. What, what have you got? Yes, you've got a hole that has been divided into eight equal parts. Each one of those parts is an eighth, okay? But I want you to draw a line horizontally across the middle because we're going to make it into a number line, okay? So now we've got specific points where our numbers need to go and those numbers need to go on the folds. So we'll go, where are you going to put your one-eighths? Where are you going to put four-eighths? Have a go at filling in the number line. So you should start with zero and you should end with eight eighths. Brilliant. It's time now for a bit of a challenge. OK, so you can see that I've got a almost blank number line. I've got a zero on one end and I've got ten tenths on the other. So think about what you know about this already. OK, so I've got a zero and the end point is ten tenths which is the whole okay it is one whole number line so think about what it will have been divided into i'm going to put an arrow on this number line and i want you to think about what these two children are saying so we've got sarah who thinks that the arrow is pointing at six tenths and we've got chen who thinks that the arrow is pointing at two tenths Okay, I want you to have a little think about who's right, but more importantly, I want you to explain how you know that. So that is your challenge for this, for today's lesson. Okay, that's the end of our lesson. Thank you very much.